Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we've got a reel that came in that unfortunately is uh, not repairable. Jim, James sent it to me, and um, I did my analysis on it. I know it's not going to be repairable, but I thought I would give this as an example of how salt water can ruin a fishing reel. And in, uh, and in this case, I guess let's call this a tuition reel now, uh, because uh, the cost to repair of parts were available it just exceeds the value of the reel. This is a Mitchell 300X. This is a reel that uh, uh, Mitchell made. It was made in uh, China. It's the new wave of the, uh, the Mitchell product line. It's owned by Pure Fishing. When James sent this in, he sent it in because there's no anti-reverse. And so the first thing you want to do from a problem diagnosis is you want to go in and find out how this reel is made. Well, this reel has an anti-reverse. It's an instant anti-reverse. And it's uh, up top under the rotor. And uh, then you want to see what parts could be affected by it and see what is failing in the reel. So what I thought we would do is show you the process behind that. We'll take an internal look at this reel. But this is an example of how salt water can can cause a reel to fail and we'll talk a little bit about best practices in terms of uh, dealing with the salt water right up front. So to get started you want to remove the, uh, the spool and while I'm doing that if you have an interest in these types of videos if you like to learn about fishing wheel repair or just fishing wheels in general and uh, how they come apart, how they're made, how to service them uh, good points and bad points about those reels. Well, this is a good channel to watch and I would recommend that you go ahead and subscribe to my channel if uh, if you like those kinds of videos. So to remove the rotor up top, we can remove it from the top. We don't have to take the case off. We'll take the case off later to look at the reel. But again, I know this one is beyond repair because of the work I've done previously. There is a spool shim washer that is on this reel. You can see it here. This one seems to be uh, leather or some kind of fabric. That adjusts the height of the spool so that your line can spool evenly uh, as you go up and down. Then you have a little click ratchet. That click ratchet, there's a little trigger under here. You can see sometimes it's a spring. This one is a little piece of plastic here. But that little tag that comes out makes a noise when the uh, when the, sp the uh, spool is running backwards when you're taking on drag. So that gets removed. If that's tight to remove, use a little needle nose pliers or something and rock it up. But that's not uh, not set there. So here's your first example. Uh, first example of the issue is the salt water has corroded this. Uh, screw. There's no screwdriver that can hold that. Now again, I've had this reel open previously, but I thought it would serve as a good lesson for everybody. So what I did was that that, that little screw just holds down a lockdown clamp on here, and that this particular lockdown clamp is not um, not that strong. So I used a deep socket and just a little bit of extra oomph, and I was able to loosen up the. Uh, rotor tie down nut with, uh, without damaging that. Now you can leave that in place, you can knock that out, you can try to replace that. Again that's all on the presumption that you can make the reel work again. In this case uh, we're beyond that. So when I pulled that off here's what I saw. When you remove that rotor you can see evidence that the salt water got underneath the rotor here. There's a good pile of sand here there's greening and corrosion on the counterweight. There's sand inside the trip mechanism here and just an awful lot of dirt. So that's, uh, that's a good indication that this wheel got swamped or at a minimum that the uh, undersides of the rotors uh, have not been serviced in quite some time. I saw a spinning wheel that is totally rusted. And so the first problem that we had was that this dog was rusted in place as well. So it would not move in to engage the little slots that it would hold on. You can see the slots in between those little studs there. That would not engage. So I did manage to free this up. I took the screw out. I removed the assembly. It's got a spring in it. 
I oiled it all up and I was able to make that work. Now you can see that as the reel turns, that anti-reverse falls into the slot to hold your instant anti-reverse from uh, backpedaling, right? The only problem here now is what really caused this reel to fail is you can't turn it either way. So that instant anti-reverse should work by having a, uh, a collar underneath here that allows this to spin independent and then the ball bearings on the instant anti-reverse are gonna grab it when you go to backpedal the reel. It's a friction clutch. Well, the collar is frozen to the pinion. The main gear, the bearings in that are frozen to the collar. So that's what you have now, is you have total lockup. It cannot move. And why does it move when it's off? Because the whole piece is turning as a unit, and that, that just shouldn't be. So underneath, the reel seems to be turning fine. You, you could struggle if you wanted to. Try and make this uh, collar come off. Again, is there's way too much frozen here, and that's because salt water penetrated this reel. And uh, you can see it better here. The pinion gear, the collar is totally rusted and corroded, locked into the steel of the, um, the instant anti-reverse. I'm gonna call that one poor design without seeing much more. A lot of the new instant anti-reverses have a plastic or a Teflon collar underneath a metal shell, and that kind of prevents this from happening. But in this case, it looks like we may just have a complete uh, metal piece, but I can't tell because, well, everything is so rusted. What happened? Salt water got in here. Well, when salt water gets in here and it's not flushed, the salt water is going to corrode these metals. It's going to cause them to rust, particularly if they're a steel material. And it being a steel material, it's going to eventually rust and lock up and then you're done. So the collar can't move. The, uh, the inside rotor can't move. The total rotor then is all frozen and locked up. This part is no longer available. Neither is the uh, anti-reverse stock. So you have a reel that was manufactured that does not have parts uh, available for it. You have a frozen assembly that you can't remove. And uh, this reel is no longer of any use to anybody. So let's just uh, show you the inside of it while I have it here. We'll make it a, a complete tuition reel, if you will. You're going to unscrew the handle. We know the bottom's working okay, so that's pretty cool. Unscrew the handle. Now we have four side plate screws. Here's evidence again of the salt water. This is externally. So you have salt water uh, rust or, or corrosion on these. That may or may not be a stainless steel screw. I can't tell. It may just be that this has got a lot of dirt on it. And uh, I understand this uh, reel was the fellow's father's reel. And uh, I don't know if the story behind it. Those would always be good stories to tell if uh, reels could uh, talk. So if you like these kinds of uh, videos and have a question about this reel or any reel in particular, if you leave that question in the comments section, I'll try and get you an answer to that question. It could be on a reel that you're working on. Maybe you're having trouble uh, repairing one. Maybe you've got a problem with your reel and you're trying to figure it out from a diagnosis standpoint. Uh, or maybe it's just a general question. Maybe you're thinking of buying a particular reel or something and just want to know a little bit more about it. If I can help you, I'll certainly try to do that. And uh, if I can't, I'll try and point you to a, uh, a resource that may be able to help you with that. Well, these screws are definitely in trouble here. The uh, slots are somewhat worn on them. And this one is actually a nice design on the reel. And uh, you can see Without the anti-reverse being frozen, it, it, it runs pretty smoothly. All right, four side plate screws will help you remove this plate. I don't think we're going to see water intrusion here. No, we got a good, uh, good amount of um, grease in here that stopped that. All right, so here's what you have internally, which is a really nice reel. You have a, a uh, main gear, you have two bearings, and those uh, are not frozen. And then you have a worm drive set up for your, uh, your oscillation gear. So in the back here is a worm drive that's going to be driven off of a cog that it interplays with the, the pinion gear here. It's going to move this anti-reverse up and down. In order to move the pinion gear, 
it's going to be driven by the main gear. So it, this one eliminates the, the small gear on the back of the main gear. It substitutes the, the main gear teeth and a cog behind here as the driver. And you'll see as it goes up and down, it's a very smooth operating reel. So as a, uh, as a nice design and reel, this is good. This is kind of the design that you will see on a Shimano uh, upper end reel, maybe the Stratix or the Sedonas or the, I forget the other one, but there's a lot of uh, Shimanos that will use this reel and uh, design. And this worm gear design is very similar to a level wind. If you picture this being a level wind in a, uh, a low profile bait caster, uh, like this one, you'll see that this moves back and forth just like that. So they took the, the one design from the bait caster, they moved it over to the, um, the spinning reel, and instead of lining back and forth, it's pushing this bar up and down to move the spool up and down as you do that. So it's kind of a shame. So what did we learn from this? You better flush your reels when you're in a salt water environment. Flush it with fresh water, I always suggest that after a saltwater trip, you take the reel off the pole, you put it in a small can or a, or a bucket, you fill it with fresh water and just let it sit. That will dissolve any residual salts uh, and the sprays. We also learned that you should do uh, regular maintenance on it. This one has been sitting a while uh, and you should uh, keep these reels lubricated. Now, down below here, it's in pretty nice shape, but up above, I guess what happened here is that screw probably became worn, you couldn't get that off, nobody paid attention to servicing the upper end of the reel, and ultimately that salt water just did this reel in. So that's a little bit of problem diagnosis and a little bit of a warning if you're uh, fishing in a salt water environment, and a little bit of a suggestion in terms of how to take care of these reels. So I hope you liked that. If you did, please indicate that uh, you liked that on the video. Again, please subscribe if you're not a regular subscriber to this, and please stay tuned for more. To everybody who's a first responder, thank you for everything it is that you're doing to keep us safe during the pandemic. And to all, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.